Hey everybody, my name is Beard Grizzly, and I wanted to sit down and talk with you guys about the 2.4 update to Sidearms. Sidearms have been a much talked about and much wanted class that were added in Taken King uh, after we ended up screaming for them in year one. There were a couple things though that were missing from them and it felt like they were a little on the underpowered side. Bungie agreed with us and ended up giving them a little bit of a buff. The update patches for sidearms read, Unified damage for all sidearm types. Increased damage for existing Hake sidearm families by 3% for lowest rate of fire and 7% for higher rate of fires. Uh, decreased damage for non-hit scan sidearms by 5% for Vestian Dynasty and Queen's Choice. You'll be able to tell this pretty quickly when we start taking a look into the sidearms that are existing, but ones like Havoc Pigeon, for instance, will end up seeing a 3% increase, where Jabber Hockey will end up getting a 7% increase. Uh, this is actually a really good thing because it helps to actually, well, as it says, unify damage for sidearms. Minor extension of damage falloff point for sidearms across the board. Minor increase of stability for sidearms across the board. Added damage bonus in PvE, 20-30% to 30 dependent on combat tier. And the last point on here isn't really a buff, it's just something that's more for housekeeping than anything else. Uh, they have a new sidearm type that's being introduced and it will actually have a higher rate of fire than what we currently have right now. Guys, the way we're going to handle these weapon tests is kind of simple. First, we'll introduce the weapon. We'll take a look at the perks. We'll take a look at the uh, sights that are used on each of the guns. And then from there, we'll go ahead and take a look at their fire rates as well as also how they handle under controlled circumstances uh, against a very all too familiar wall for some of you. After we're done taking a look at some of the basics on the weapon, we'll go ahead and run into private matches and shoot up a live target. Uh, we'll actually see how many bullets it takes to drop a target both at long range and short range. After we're done with the live fire test, we'll go ahead and switch over to Crucible for some practical application, uh, well as also some strikes to see how they handle in there. First, I wanted to take a look at the gear that I'm using. I have the Harrowed Path of Zol with sidearm ammo increases on them. Uh, and I also am using the Purifier Robes uh, to also increase my special ammo capacity. Uh, you can find multiple things that will actually help you out with your ammo capacity, but this is a, one way that you can actually do so. I do have another couple chest pieces that increase sidearm ammo, but this is just another way if you use certain exotic chest pieces that carry special ammo. Our first gun up on the board is Jabberhawky D. Uh, what we have on this guy is Sure Shot IS, Reactive Reload, Cast Key Cade, and Snapshot. Jabber Hockey has actually turned out to be one of my favorite sidearms. Uh, it seems very dependable in a lot of different situations. Uh, I can definitely count on it. Uh, it switches quickly even without the, uh, the use of Quick Draw, uh, which is easily one of my favorite sidearm perks that are out there. You'll be able to go ahead and cut down a couple enemies with your primary, switch over to it, and it, again, it just seems like it picks up very quickly uh, with that Sure Shot IS. Even off of spawn, you'll be able to go ahead and cut down an opponent pretty quickly. In PvE, no real difference. I feel that the weapon is very stable. I feel that it has a lot of very practical application. Uh, overall, it definitely feels solid. It feels stable. But the Jabberhawk has kind of been one of the favorites for many people, uh, only because it was one of their first ones that they got a hold of in the Taken King. I find with the Sure Shot IS, I'm able to find a target's precision spot and really, really exploit it uh, to the best of what the gun has. Just remember not to sit back and try to fire a long distance. Next up is the Havoc Pigeon. This one also has Sure Shot IS, but it also has Rangefinder, Outlaw, and Quick Draw. So you'll be able to notice as we go along here that I'm able to draw this weapon quite fast. Yo! 
almost there. Oh, the hound. You guys may have noticed it while it was in the live fire testing section, but I found that range on this one is actually a little bit harder to handle. Uh, granted, I know that's what's not what sidearms aren't exactly made for, but I found that the, uh, in comparison to say the Jabberhawk, things were a little weird. However, I found myself being able to start clearing rooms with this sucker in PVE, and that was something that was a little on the uh, on the outstretch side for me. I didn't expect that. With the additions of Rangefinder and having Outlaw, I was able to get to a new clip of uh, ammo very quickly. Again, it seemed pretty easy to end up finding a target's weak spot and really exploiting it, uh, thanks to that short shot IS. Uh, and even if I go ahead and die and I come back, I'm still able to go ahead and clear a room with this sucker pretty effectively and pretty quickly. The trouble is, I know that this isn't the case with most Havoc Pigeons, and that this is not, unfortunately, a very uh, successful sidearm for one big reason. It starts with 12 rounds. Its impact is a little bit more than what the Jabberhawk is going to be, but overall, I'm not too impressed with the overall handling of the weapon. Uh, it takes a lot of getting used to, I guess is more the, the biggest thing about it. There are circumstances that I've been able to really wreak havoc with it, uh, and obviously the one less shot that it takes to drop somebody from a Jabberhawk over to using the Havoc Pigeon is definitely a nicety. I found Rangefinder to be extremely helpful with this uh, sidearm, so if you get one with it, definitely give it a shot. Next thing on our list is the Queen's Choice. This one's a little different because it actually runs the typical uh, sights and muzzles that you would expect to see. So CQB Ballistics, uh, Reactive Reload, Quick Draw, and Feeding Frenzy. At first when I had seen this gun, I thought it was going to end up being a total beast. So we'll end up seeing how it handles as we go along. Queen's Choice is one that I really expected to like quite a bit, but unfortunately I didn't. I started finding out that the gun unfortunately suffered from a lack of target acquisition, and this is something that really does hurt the sidearm. It is unfortunately nothing that could have been fixed by this buff, and it really just comes down to the fact that the sights that are on it are not exactly the greatest things in the world at least in PvP. Crucible is definitely not where this gun ends up thriving unless you have a target running right on at you, or you have the support of a grenade or a fire team behind you. It's a great little gun if you've got some spare kick behind it, but otherwise, on its own, I felt like I was missing something if I didn't have a Jabberhawk or a Havoc Pigeon in my hand instead. My other big problem is that I got lucky and I got reactive reload on my Jabberhawk, so having it here just feels like it's a mere inconvenience with the lack of good target acquisition. Some instances it just felt like if I had a different gun I would have been in a better circumstance or would have been able to drop somebody. So unfortunately Queen's Choice doesn't necessarily get my vote. I still don't know if this is a good all-around gun. Personal opinion, I wouldn't recommend it. Next on our list is the Iron Wreath. It has Steady Hand IS, Zen Moment, Spray and Play, and Quick Draw. It's not quite the role I'd like to have, but it's still pretty stable nonetheless. Exquisite work. 
find myself often switching to the Iron Wreath just to really use it and have fun with it. Uh, clearing rooms with it is pretty consistent for me. Though I don't like it quite as much as the Jabberhawk, and that might be due to the sound, that might just be due to the, the extra silencer off the end of it, uh, something just doesn't feel necessarily right about Iron Wreath. This is not to say it is a bad sidearm. It's an excellent sidearm. It handles very well. It's very stable. It has a 15-shot magazine, which overall can actually be boosted if you get the right perks. And in general, I just feel that it's a very well-rounded piece of equipment. You could do much, much worse than an Iron Wreath. And I truly do hope that the next version of this gun is very similar to the one that we were able to acquire in year two. Really, I think it's a beautiful looking piece. Its ability within the Crucible is all helped out too by its solid rate of fire and solid stability. Though with most sidearms, you'll still get outclassed by that one slider shotgun. You can still come up and surprise some people though if you have the correct accuracy. That's one thing that I will definitely say, even though I don't have a high target acquisition sight on my Iron Wreath, it still feels like it rewards you for taking your time and lining up those really good shots. And of course, if you end up getting in too close, you can just let the bullets fly. There, there's nothing saying you can't. As I mentioned before, I think it and Jabberhawk actually sit in its own class or in the same class. Uh, they're very similar firearms and they do definitely handle somewhat the same. Overall, you can definitely cause a lot of devastation with this weapon, and again, I hope that the Gear 3 version of this sidearm is equal, if not better, than what we see now. But Bungie has a lot to live up to when it comes to the Iron Wreath. We'll take a look at the first exotic sidearm that was introduced, and that is Dreg's Promise. This one's a little different for a couple reasons, though, because it actually follows the same thing as, say, Queen's Choice. Uh, we use aggressive ballistics on this guy, even though it has a couple other choices. Uh, its other perks are Grave Robber. I choose Perfect Balance or Field Scout. I go back and forth between them. And the exotic perk on here is that it has Shock Rounds, High Velocity Ricochet Rounds with Enhanced Target Acquisition. What this means is that they can actually bounce off of the back of a wall, maybe go ahead and come back and hit somebody else. The exotic perk otherwise that this gun actually has is that it will give you ammo on respawn. The weapon will actually start with 42 rounds as opposed to a typical which is about 18 to 21 rounds depending on the other sidearm. Heavy ammo available. Gained the lead. Drag's Promise is my favorite sidearm in the game at current. Uh, I know it's an exotic and it does take up that exotic slot, but personally, I think it is worthwhile. The amount of damage that it can actually pump out on a target is incredible, uh, as you'll end up seeing even with supers, and while they are active, it can end up cutting down somebody in a super very quickly. The one thing it's not too great at is its range. With having a three round burst, you can actually go ahead and cut through your ammo pretty quickly. And with its range suffering a little bit more than the typical sidearm, this is something that can kind of hurt it. If you continue to come up onto a target, things don't seem to be that bad, but overall you need to continuously make sure that you are replenishing your ammo and making sure that you have enough for the next engagement. Reloads are fast and smooth on the Dreg's Promise, and overall it just feels like a very tight knit piece of equipment. To me, it feels better than most of the other sidearms, only because of that burst and the extra stability that it has. 
getting rid of perfect balance and just adding field scout on it still is a stable monster in our last field test you'll probably notice that i actually had problems with keeping the gun uh, holding steady for one reason and that's because i tried to move my joystick there is no reason to actually do so Drags fire so stable that it's easily one of the best weapons out there, I think, on the market. The only problem is you can definitely rip through your ammo reserves very quickly. All you have to be mindful of is your ammo, but otherwise, to me, it's a very strong gun and worth your exotic slot. Finally, guys, I got a special treat, and that is a Trespasser. Uh, the perks on this gun are as follows. The exotic perk is called Be the Danger. This weapon fires bursts of bullets with deadly accuracy. It also has Relentless Tracker, so basically every time you go ahead and kill, your tracking will actually be more enhanced. He uses Hand Loaded on his model, though you have the option of using Reinforced Barrel or also Quick Draw on the weapon. The last perk on the gun is called Unrepentant. Reloading after a kill causes the next burst to be a longer, more powerful super burst. As a reminder guys, the only way we can get unrepentant to proc is if we go ahead and kill somebody and then reload afterward. So we called in a buddy of ours, Umbrella Fiasco, where Green is going to head and kill him before he kills me. I need to give a special shout out to Green Neon Driver who was able to get me some footage on this weapon. Uh, I didn't actually have one myself to try out. So guys, without actually having a chance to play with this gun myself, uh, what I've been able to see of it is that I need to get one, badly. Uh, it definitely dishes out a ton of power and if you end up having the ability to shoot somebody and kill somebody on the spot, uh, you are definitely given a bonus for taking out the next guy uh, that crosses your path because that's why they call it the trespasser. As you've also noticed, you can shoot and kill with one burst with this sucker if you have unrepentant on and you can land a good majority of the six shots that it fires on the head. One thing that's a bit different from it and Dreg's promise is that Green has actually commented and said that it has a little bit more walk to it. It doesn't stay in place quite as much as what Dreg's Promise does. So it'll actually take a little bit more getting used to. But again, against shotguns or something of the like, you've still got a little bit more range. You've still got a little bit more power and kick behind it. Uh, so it really can rip up an opponent in PvP. The only other lack that it has is that it's 18 rounds instead of, say, 21 with Dreg's Promise. So you kind of give a little, take a little... Uh, overall, it seems like a very good sidearm. I just wish I could comment on it a little further with my own personal experience. One thing you want to be aware of is what modifiers are active while you're out doing PvE or other things. Uh, only because sidearms can be a heavy contender thanks to the fact that a lot of them have higher ammo capacities than most of our other special weapons that are available to us. Snipers, shotguns, fusion rifles, they all have lower ammo capacity in comparison to something like a sidearm. Due to this, I think that's one of their stronger suits. They can carry on and prolong firefights. This makes it so that having one on your side is not a bad thing. They're reliable, they're stable, a lot of them have very strong perks, and if used right, you can end up clearing a room with one alone without any help from your primary. The footage in the background is actually from Prison of Elders when the Special Weapons perk uh, went live. Having Special Weapons favored or having the element that your sidearm is actually linked to can really give it a heavy boost, and that is something that is definitely worthwhile. 
Guys, Taken King introduced sidearms to us, and I think they're a very valued and welcome member to the Special Weapons class. Overall, they have some very good uses. They're very good for backing up your primary when you're out of ammo, to just quickly switch over to one and finish off a target. They're very good on their own in mid-range to short-range encounters. And overall, the buff to them has been more than welcome. The additional target acquisition, the additional damage, the additional stability. Everything feels like sidearms have more of a place than ever right now. If you guys haven't given sidearms a chance, I would definitely recommend to pick one up, pull one out of your vault, and give it another shot. Again, my name has been Beard Grizzly, and I hope you enjoyed this look at most of the sidearms that are available to us in year two. And I hope all of you enjoy Rise of Iron starting tomorrow. Guardians, keep your guns greased up. And I'll see you out there in Rise of Iron. Take care. Oh, you're still here? I guess he can check out this sweet Nova bomb. There's nobody on Alpha. Yeah. I don't believe what I see. They believe me. You're still here? Well, you ever wonder what Varric sounds like as a chipmunk? Ah, uh, crap.